So, I'm here on this page to seek advice on what I should do. Ever since I installed this motion light for Dad, it's been going haywire, always turning on. It shouldn't be broken because Dad made me buy it months back and it's reasonably high quality. I got it from the local hardware store in town and I don't wish to return it because of how far we live. Due to gas prices, Dad doesn't want me taking the car out, only for the essentials. The model is a Duffman Security Solar Power Floodlight. I've drilled it onto the top of my garage and for the first month it was working fine. Whenever Dad walked past, it would shine down on him, so there were no problems there. It took a lot of hard work to keep it up there without the light falling off. I live in the countryside where there's a high draft that comes in occasionally and usually tends to knock things over outside where it's always my job to fix them. We live in the crevice of a valley with hills climbing around us so there should be little to no wind. I've always thought there was a logical explanation to this until I installed the light. I mostly enjoy working on the farm. The peace and quiet is nice, and I understand that not many people have the same privilege I do. You can yell in all directions and no one hears a soul. Our closest neighbours are around 300 metres away, let alone the closest town being an hour drive. Gas prices are going so high up nowadays, it's hard for me to get out of the farm. I haven't seen my friends for a while now, let alone another person other than my parents. The only real interaction I have with the outer world is this computer. I'm on my computer most nights. It's positioned in the corner of the room, so my back is normally facing the window. My view outside is our old 82 canary yellow Hilux and the trees surrounding our driveway. To the right is the garage. I never go near the garage. Something about it is off. Before we even built our house and settled in, the garage was always there. Since no one comes out here, it's likely that someone built it for the hell of it. It's a nice garage with two doors, plenty of rust and enough space to fit two cars into. I remember moving into the place and not being allowed to go into the garage for weeks. Dad said that I shouldn't be looking in there at my age. Now that I'm older, he still hasn't told me what he saw. The wind normally lightly pushes the house around every night, since it was always pitch black outside. You tend to hear noises then check on them in the morning. It never got too bad, just taps on the window and the wind beating on the trees. The day after I would clean up whatever got pushed over, and I've been doing that for the past few years. It only got really bad a few months ago when I was alone in my room on the computer. I felt eyes on me, glaring through the window. I never close my curtains because it gets too hot in the room, but that was the first time I ever did it. I thought it was the wind again, until I heard footsteps coming closer to the window. I immediately regretted closing the curtains, yet was too paralysed in fear to open them. I kept my eyes on the curtains for what seemed like hours frozen in fear. I remember the footsteps stopping nearly a foot away from my window. I didn't move, even when the curtains were closed and I couldn't see what was out there. I felt as though whoever was out there, they were looking back at me. Five minutes went by where I heard nothing. I swear I heard footsteps but the wind had stopped and the sound of boots on gravel slowly dissolved into a memory. After a while, I broke my gaze from the curtain and turned back towards the computer, trying to believe it didn't happen. The moment I sat back into my chair, I heard loud boots stomping on gravel. I snapped my head back towards the curtains, even when I knew I couldn't see, to hear those same footsteps slowly get quieter and quieter, as if the night came to take whoever that was away. I got no sleep that night. 
When I opened my curtains, I couldn't see anything. Not even the bright yellow Hilux, only meters away from the house. When morning came by, I opened my door and peered down the hall to see that the front door was open. Glass lay on the floor next to the coat hanger with a rock-sized hole through the top half of the door. There was no rock in sight. Dad woke up a little later than when I saw it, and when I told him about the incident last night, he knew we had to get better security. All we have protecting our property from people driving in is a rusty gate with a master lock chain wrapped around it. A saw could easily get through that. At least with the light, we can see what's coming. After little discussion, we spent the extra money to purchase the light. After installing the light, it was amazing. All of the driveway was reasonably visible whenever we walked out there to test it. Funnily enough, the wind stopped for a while too, at least for a few weeks after. Then the wind came again. It didn't take me long to realize the wind picked up again. I looked outside to see darkness, always pitch black. A few nights later, however, was when I started seeing shadows. Early February was when I saw unusual things. During nightfall, the light would flick on spontaneously before turning off again. It would always bug me, but I never thought anything of it. A rabbit scurrying across the driveway is the usual suspect. That was until the shadows got more apparent. The lights started turning on longer and longer. I finally saw what was causing the light. There were shadow figures outside my room. I couldn't explain it at all. I just looked in disbelief. I tried to find the object that casted the shadow, but whatever it was, it was being casted in the dark as the shadows were being controlled in the light. Dad never believed me when it came to what I saw, but I saw it. We can't afford phones or cameras, so I'd always yell to Dad and he couldn't see them. Each night, the light would stay on for longer. The shadows would get closer. On the fifth night, I couldn't take it anymore. I wasn't sleeping and I knew I wasn't crazy. I rushed into Dad's room, begging him to look. His eyes opened to form an enraged look. That was the first and only time Dad ever hit me. He dragged me from the collar and told me to watch from my window as he went outside. I've never been so scared for my father's safety. I see him outside. He doesn't see what I see. I don't appear to see what he sees. His eyes glare at the garage. He stands for minutes, entranced at the sight before sprinting into the garage. I've never seen Dad run before. His figure is large, and seeing him run was an impossible thought. What was in there? I scream out for Dad, but hear no answer. The motion light turns off. My eyes dart around the dark to see anything to no avail. I decided to move out of my room to go out. I'm tired of sitting around. When I open my door and head to the entrance, I freeze. It's a shadow figure standing over a broken down door. It's so silent. My being is silent. It is silent. I stare at it long enough to notice that the figure is in the shape of my father. I know now that he never returned from that garage. I don't know what to do now. I've locked myself in my room and I hear the boots on gravel outside my window walking back and forth. The motion light isn't turning on. I can't see. I can't hear. I need help. If you see something outside your window, for the love of God, please ignore it. <laughs>